Hi and welcome to another video. This one is how to solder and apply heat shrink to cables. One of the first things you want to do is clean off the tip of your soldering iron so once it's heated up go ahead and put a little piece of uh, solder on it and wipe it off. It should clean a lot of the debris and old solder off. The next step is to unsolder the wire from the connector terminal post and what I do is I place my soldering iron on the post and not in the solder and heat the post up and eventually the solder melts and you can pull the wire away. After you solder the wire from the connector terminals, it's gonna look something like this. You can have a lot of leftover solder. So you don't wanna leave that there. You don't wanna use old solder to re-solder new fresh wire onto the um, connector. So what we're gonna do next is take this off. I use this solder extractor to extract the solder from the post there. Uh, basically it has a plunger on it. You push the plunger down, it locks into place. There's a little button on the side. When you push it, it releases the plunger and it kind of sucks the solder out of the out of the post there. And again, you want to use your soldering iron. Uh, you want to put your soldering iron on the post itself, not inside the post where the solder is, because that will just kind of booger up your soldering iron, uh, your soldering tip. At this point, what I like to do next is snip a piece of the old cable and uh, start new with some fresh wire that hasn't been cut or soldered. Uh, I use my stripper tool to take the outside portion of the cable off. You don't want to cut all the way through it, otherwise you cut the wire, the cable, um, completely. And then just pick apart the uh, wires that are in there. The, the copper wire that surrounds everything, that's a shield. You want to make sure that that's pulled away from the other uh, wires in there and some cables have this uh, cloth material that kind of I guess insulates the cable you'll want to go ahead and separate that and cut that as well because that'll just get in your way you'll need to solder that and it won't solder to anything actually so go ahead and snip that off and next thing I do is cut the uh, wires to length. So once you have the wire cut to about an inch, just snip off the tips, actually the, the plastic part. Use your, your uh, stripping tool to strip off a little piece at the top. I would say maybe a quarter, an inch, quarter of an inch. Do it to all three wires. And once you've accomplished that, go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step is to secure the cable on to a vise, I have that little vise there, and get the cable ready to add solder onto the wires that you just snipped. So one of the um, tricks to not having a cold solder joint, which means solder that really isn't gonna stick, is to heat the wire up first. Make sure the wire is nice and, and hot, and then put the solder on it. That way you know the solder will stick, or is sticking to the wire. So heat the wire up, and then go ahead and apply the solder to it. Go ahead and repeat this process for the other wires in the cable, and let's move on to the next step. Whether you have a male or female end of a connector, the process is still the same. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get solder into the ports of the terminals, and this is how you do that. You'll start to notice a common theme here, and that is not to touch the solder with the soldering iron. So again, the same process, uh, heat the terminal up so it's hot enough to melt the solder. And once it's hot enough to melt the solder, you melt the solder in there and get a little dab of solder into the ports. At this time, let's go ahead and put the boot of the connector onto the cable and also the heat shrink wrap. We don't want to forget that because if we solder the connector and forget these, we're going to have to unsolder them and put them back on. So let's go ahead and take time to do that now. So before we solder, we're going to have to uh, locate the numbers on the connector that correspond to the wires that you're going to put on there. Uh, sometimes they're hard to see. You may need, may need to use a magnifying glass. But basically, number one is your shield. You'll, you'll solder it number one to the shield. Number two is usually your positive or hot. Uh, and number three is usually your negative or cold. Uh, red is usually positive and black is usually negative. In this case we have a blue wire so we decided to go ahead and make red the positive and blue the negative. 
Let's go ahead and solder the wire onto the connector. And what you do is you hold the soldering iron to the post, get the post nice and hot, and it melts the solder inside. And once that happens, place the wire inside it, take the soldering iron away, and let the solder cool off. And you got a nice solder joint. Pull the heat shrink up until it covers the wires that you just soldered. Let's get ready to apply heat to the heat shrink tube. Turn your heat shrink gun to hot. Hold the cable with the heat shrink tubing about one inches above the heat shrink gun. And I apologize for the poor video quality here. Uh, go ahead and roll it back and forth and make sure you get all of the heat shrink tubing heated up so that it constricts onto the and sticks onto the cable that you just soldered. The next step is to put the connector back together and they're basically the same. Yours may differ a little bit from this. This has a plastic shield uh, that covers a cable and uh, the connector goes inside a metal end connector and it can only go one way as this video shows. There's a little slot right there that matches to the slot on the black plastic connector. Put them in uh, fit them nice and tight together and then get the boot and screw the boot in and your connector is ready to be tested. The very last step in this process is to check your cable to make sure that it is going to work. This is our cable tester here and as you can see it has XLR uh, connections on the side. You plug your XLR, your mic cable, into it um, and ours test this way. You test all the terminals and if they all light up without any other lights lighting up, you're good to go.